So I will introduce myself. Um, it was mentioned already that uh, I used to work with uh, Professor Wiesel, Elie Wiesel, for seven years. I founded and uh, I was the director of uh, his archive at uh, Boston University in the United States. And uh, you must know that the, this is a unique archive. Total uh, number of uh, documents on his uh, private archives is over a million. So to organize an over a million documents, it's not a simple work, it's not a simple job. But after all, I would like to speak about one document which is very important for all of us. It's very important for all of those who are dealing, doing research on Holocaust in any side of this topic. As may you, everybody know, the most popular book about the Holocaust is the book Night by Elie Wiesel. It's over 40 million copies in 35 different languages. Um, the book was written in Yiddish. It was written in uh, 54. And the original manuscript was over 800 pages. The book was published at the first time in Yiddish in 56 in Buenos Aires by a Jewish publisher, publisher who used to, to, to publish Yiddish book mainly about the Holocaust. The first book, instead of 800 pages, the Yiddish version is 200 pages, 240. Wiesel took this book to French. He used to live in French on this time. And on 58, the book was published in French with introduction by Francois Mauriac, Nobel laureate for literature, and it slowly became famous in France. After two years, in 60, 1960, it was published in English. Small publishing house in New York published it. And a year after, it was published in Hebrew. And from then, it was published by many different languages. The name of the book in Yiddish was Wenn die Welt tos geschwägen. In Hebrew, the translation is Ve'olam Shatak. It was not published on this name in France. It was published in France by the name La Noir, Night. It was published in English, the name is Night. It was published in Hebrew with the name Halayla, Laila. First Halayla, then Laila. And this book is running on the market for about 58 years, including the Yiddish, 60 years. So what is important with a book that was published at the first time in Yiddish 60 years ago? Something has been changed on the last two or three years, which I kept as a top secret till the last months when it was first revealed on Israeli newspaper. During my time at the Wiesel's archive, at Boston University, I found a manuscript. This is, you can see this is the, a copy, it's not the original one, this is a copy, I will not show you everything. This is the first page, you can see the other page, it's a manuscript of Eri Wiesel. 
And this is the manuscript. This is the, cop the copy of the manuscript. What is very interesting? First of all, nobody knows before that Eli Wiesel wrote the book in Hebrew. Nobody knows when he wrote the, the, the Hebrew version. Nobody read the Hebrew version in order to compare it to the Yiddish or the French or the English version. More of that. The Hebrew version, the title is the Aulam Shatek, Shatak, when the Welt of Geschwägen. But on the other side, he wrote two very important information. First, he put, he mentioned Lanua, which is this is the name today. Under it, he wrote first draft. So now we have another question. When he wrote it, before, before the Yiddish version or after the Yiddish version? Now we have another question. Why he wrote it? For whom? If he had the Hebrew version, why he wrote the Yiddish version? And when it was translated, why he didn't give the Hebrew version? Why it was translated from the Yiddish to the French? And if it was translated from the Yiddish to French, does he make, did he make any changes from the Hebrew version? So this is a lot of questions about this manuscript because then we have to check line by line and to see if the information on the Hebrew version is the same information like in the Yiddish version. And if this version is the same like the French version, because maybe changes have been made on the, ver on the French version when it was translated from Yiddish to French. If this is the situation, maybe changes have been made also when it was translated from the French to the English or to the Hebrew. So what is the source for the most famous book about the Holocaust? The Hebrew version or the Yiddish version? This is a question. Because if we will not find the same information, we have a problem. I must say, and I must admit, I spoke with Elie Wiesel during my life more than 500 hours. We spoke 100 times, 100 times. Sometimes we spoke every day. Sometimes we spoke once a week, sometimes once a month. For the last 33 years, we spoke more than 500 hours. I asked him many questions about this manuscript when I found it. It's difficult for me to tell you I received a prompted answers that I can tell you, give you an answer for all the questions that are raising from this manuscript. No, we have a lot of questions. We still have a lot of questions about it. Why? The answer is because there is many, many changes between this manuscript and the book that you are familiar with. Many changes. And the question is, to whom Eli Wiesel wrote the books? Is the, the Hebrew version is for the Israelis, those who know Hebrew, and the Yiddish version is for the, those, the survivors? Why he made the changes so early? Or maybe he wrote this version after he published the first 
Yiddish version. But the differences is very interesting because I will give you one example, not more. Only from the first chapter. On the book that is running on the market, the first chapter is about what happened in Siget. Siget is the hometown of Eli Wiesel. He was born in Siget. He grew up in Siget. He deported with his parents and his sisters from Siget to Auschwitz, May 1944. On the version on night that you are familiar with, the first page chapter is only about Siget at the first phase of the Holocaust. What happened after the Germans entered to Siget? Siget before and Siget during the first time of the Germans there. If you will take this book, it is very small. It is very short. In about 250 words, he described everything. Instead of 2,000 words, in this version is 250 words. Why? Why he made the change? Why he changed? What's happened? It's very important. It's very important to understand what was the response of the Jewish community in Siget to the entering of the, of the Germans, to the Nazi army, to Siget. In this version, we have no answer. On the versions that you are familiar with, we have answer. I'm not, I, I'm not saying that it's a full answer, but we have no answer. So we can ask questions about page by page on this version. And to compare line by line, and we will have a lot of questions. But I must mention, Eli Wiesel, the most famous survivor in the world. Eli Wiesel was a, an Israeli journalist for his first 22 years after the Holocaust. From 1948 till 1970, he was a journalist for what is now the most popular Israeli paper, which is called Yediot Achronot, Let's Deny Us, Last News. In order to understand this version, you must read his articles in Hebrew, which was published only on his paper. So we have to look and to check the information on the newspaper. He wrote a huge article, 2,000 words, 2,500 words of, of uh, an articles about the Holocaust. During the years that he used to work for the Yidiot Achronot, he wrote for them many, many articles. I have a list of all of them. You are, if you are doing a research and you are taking the Hebrew version, which is very, very important, I will tell you something. This version of night is more important than the version that you are familiar with because this is the first memory of him after the Holocaust. And in order to know what he thought, what it was his idea, where his idea, why he thought so and so, you must read this one with his Hebrew articles about the Holocaust. Only then you can have a not full picture, but almost a full picture that will be compared to the version tonight that you are familiar with. That is the situation. So when we are talking from now about night, and for, if we are talking about Elie Wiesel from now on, we must remember that night is not alone. 
night is going with the Hebrew version. Without it, it's less than half of the job. Those who will deal with night from now on will do only half of their job. They must read the Hebrew version in order to understand what exactly happened to Elie Wiesel. This is kind of research that you, as a scholar in Holocaust studies, must do. Try to find always the original manuscript of everything in order to compare and to see what kind of changes has been made in order to express the ideas of the author. So my, well, I, I didn't open it yet. It's in a process. But if you are interested to know Knight, and if you are interested to know Elie Wiesel, and you, if you will read about Elie Wiesel, and Professor Bushke is here, he can say again, about Knight, there is over 5,000 academic articles today. Over 5,000 articles. None of those authors of those articles knew about this version. So they did only half or less job what is expecting from researchers. From now on, when you are reading a research about night, take it very carefully. It's only part of the job, it's not the job. Thank you very much.